My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. Over the last couple of months, I've been receiving messages and emails about switching fuel types when it comes to camping and backpacking stoves. Some have written in wanting their isobutane backpacking stove to run on propane. Some have written in wanting their butane stove to run on isobutane. The thing is this, you can very easily find adapters that will allow you to switch up the fuel types. The thing is this, it can be potentially extremely dangerous to do so. For less than 10 bucks, you can get an adapter that will allow you to switch up basically to any type of fuel type that you want to. This adapter here allows a butane stove to run on isobutane. This one here allows an isobutane stove to run on propane. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And that's the most important thing to take from this video. When you have a stove that's not designed to run on any other type of fuel, it is exceptionally dangerous to switch up the fuel types. The simple truth is most stoves are not multi-fuel compatible. They're designed to run on one fuel type and that is it. Yes, you can adapt them. Yes, the stoves may run for a period of time, but that does not mean they're not going to blow up in your face later on. Because I've been receiving so many messages, so many emails about mixing up the fuel types when it comes to different types of stoves, I figured I'd better do a public service announcement of sorts. I do not want to see anyone get hurt by mixing and matching fuel types, even though I completely understand why they would want to do so. There are very valid reasons why you would want to switch up the different types of fuel, depending on the time of year, the temperature outside, elevation, and so on. That, my friends, is what this episode is all about. To start off, let's talk about the most common fuel types out on the market today, and I'm talking about gas, the most common types of gas fuel. When it comes to outdoor stoves, those for camping purposes, backpacking purposes, they will run on one of these three fuels. We have isobutane, we have pure propane, we have pure butane. With isobutane, this is the most common type of fuel for backpacking stoves, and this features a Lindell valve. With propane fuel, this is the most common with camping stoves, overlanding stoves. Basically, stoves that you would typically not carry with you because of the size and weight of not only the stoves, but also the fuel. The valve on this canister is known as a pressure regulator valve, or simply a regulator. This valve controls and reduces high pressure of propane gas that is coming from the fuel canister, and it provides a more consistent level of pressure so that the stove runs safely and effectively. Now everyone, we are looking at butane. Butane is common with both camping stoves and backpacking stoves. When it comes to the valve, that is known as a pierce type or a puncture valve. Now that we've gone over the three most common types of fuel, we've also talked about their valves. Let's talk about the differences between these fuels and why you may want to run one fuel over another. With butane, isobutane, and propane, they may all sound similar, but the thing is they have some big differences between them all. Big differences that will impact how they're used, when they're used, at what elevations they're used, and so on. To start off, let's talk about butane. This fuel is best used in the summertime. In the summertime, with warm conditions. This fuel type is very easy to locate. It's also extremely inexpensive, especially compared to the other two. You can very easily go out and purchase 12 cans of butane for around $27. That is a lot of fuel. That is a lot of outdoor use. A lot of use for a very low price. Those are the pros when it comes to this fuel. The cons are this. In cold conditions, this fuel does not perform that well. At higher elevations, this fuel does not perform very well. And I'm talking about elevations over 7,000 feet. Once you go above 7,000 feet, you need to switch over to isobutane or propane. With isobutane, this is a variant of butane and sometimes propane, but with better low temperature performance and better high elevation performance. The butane that is inside of this is not the same that's inside of the butane canister. Isobutane is different. I'm not going to go full geek on you all, so I'll just summarize it by saying this. Isobutane has the same molecular formula as butane, but it has a different arrangement of atoms. Again, I'm not going to go full geek, so I'll stop there. In other words, there are differences between this and regular butane. The best way to put it is to say this. It's like butane, but it's different. Anyways, this type of fuel here can be found in two different blends. There's a warmer blend, which includes no propane, and then there's a winter blend that does include propane. Isobutane is great for moderate temperatures, three season adventures in other words. It is pricey though. 
it can be lightweight, and it can be found in a number of different sizes of canister. While it does perform better than butane in cool conditions, it does not perform that well in really cold conditions. Typical isobutane stoves running on a summertime blend will run well even up to 8,000 feet in elevation. That's an isobutane stove that does not have a regulator. Stoves with regulators running on wintertime blends can work well up to 10,000 feet in elevation. If your stove is capable of running inverted isobutane, you can run the stove up to 12,000 feet. Next, my friends, we need to talk about propane. Propane does a great job in cold weather and also at high elevation, and that is because it is able to maintain a consistent level of vapor pressure, even in freezing conditions, even at high elevations. Because of these two benefits, this fuel is used all around the world to heat homes, to run stoves, and so on. With propane fuel, it features a much higher pressure rating than the other fuel types, and because of that, the fuel canisters are very thick and very heavy. They're designed to take a beating and not explode. It's because these canisters are thicker and heavier that most people do not go backpacking with propane. It's simply too heavy to make sense in most cases. For overlanding purposes, car camping and whatnot, this fuel type makes a lot of sense because you're not having to carry it anywhere. It's just simply riding around in your vehicle and it's ready to use whenever you need it. With that being said, I'm sure you have some questions. When talking about cool to cold conditions, what am I talking about specifically with each of these fuel types? With butane, this will run well down to roughly 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you will notice a decrease in performance from your stove. You will see that your stove is taking longer to boil water and so on. And that's because this fuel type is simply not efficient when the temperatures drop below 50 degrees. With the summertime blend of isobutane, you will have good performance down to roughly 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Below that, you will notice a decrease in performance with your stove. It's not running as loud and it's taking longer to boil water and so on. With the winter blend of isobutane, you can expect good performance down to roughly 35 degrees. It will offer you a better performance than the summertime blend but it's still not going to be that great. As it gets colder, the performance of your stove will suffer, and it doesn't matter if your stove has a regulator or not. It should be mentioned, everyone, that there are ways to extend the temperature ranges when it comes to use with butane and also isobutane. This video is likely to be long enough, and I don't want to complicate it with a bunch of information that you may not be interested in, so let's, let's stay on point here. Next, everyone, we have propane, 100% propane. This performs extremely well in all temperatures. It doesn't matter how cold or at what elevation. Again, everyone, this is why propane is used to heat homes. That takes us over to the next point, and it's something that I've talked a little bit about in this episode already. The type of fuel that you're using will directly impact performance, but so does the design of your stove. Does your stove have a regulator? Does it have a windscreen? How large is the burner head? How many BTUs or watts is your stove head putting out? Also, some stoves utilize heat spreaders. Some do not. There's all of these variables that play a role into how well, or I should say, how good the performance is with your stove. Now, my friends, let's talk about why fuel compatibility matters, why it's so important. First, the vast majority of camp stoves, backpacking stoves, they are designed to run on one fuel type and one fuel type only. Stoves that are designed to run on one fuel type, such as butane, simply cannot handle the pressures of running on another fuel, such as isobutane, or without a doubt, propane. Propane canisters put out a very high level of pressure, and if your stove is not designed to handle that type of pressure, it could blow up in your face. That's why mix and matching fuel types is so dangerous. The vast majority of backpacking stoves are designed to run on one fuel type. There are a few rare exceptions though. Those stoves are known as multi-fuel stoves. When it comes to overlanding, car camping, and whatnot, those type of stoves tend to feature the highest likelihood of being able to run on different fuel types. For an example, you can oftentimes find a Gas One stove or a Coleman stove that will run on not only propane, but also butane. Not all camping stoves, overlanding stoves, are designed to do this, but many are. You can very easily find a stove that runs on butane as well as propane. Ultimately, you can run any type of stove that you want to on your adventure. For an example, if you want to use a backpacking stove for your overland setup, you truly can. You can do that. The thing is, 
a backpacking stove was designed for backpacking purposes. So we're talking about a smaller stove, a stove that can't handle as much weight, that doesn't have as much heat output, smaller burner heads, less heat distribution, and so on. Talking about pressure for a second, propane fuel has a vapor pressure of around 145 PSI at room temperature. Butane has a vapor pressure of around 35 PSI. Whereas isobutane has a vapor pressure of around 50. That is why if your stove is designed to run on butane that you cannot run isobutane. Not unless it's specifically designed to do so. The pressures, they don't match up. 35. 50 PSI, 145 PSI. It goes without saying before you do any sort of mixing and matching of fuels that you check with the manufacturer to see that the stove is designed to run on multi-fuels. Never assume, never ever do that. If the company does not state that the stove is multi-fuel, that means it is not multi-fuel capable. You can look at the valve type of the stove and you can see immediately the type of fuel that it runs on. That fuel and that fuel only. Going back to what I said at the beginning of this episode, just because you can does not mean you should. Fuel adapters are very inexpensive and they allow you to go any which way when it comes to fuels. You can get an adapter to run on any type of fuel. You take a stove that was designed to run on butane, you get an adapter, you run isobutane. It may fail immediately and explode. Or maybe it'll run for five minutes and then explode or maybe it'll run for six hours and then explode. What I mean by that is this, just because you can put an adapter on there, you can run a different type of fuel for a few minutes or even a few hours, that does not mean that the stove is safe. That does not mean that the next time that you go and ignite it, it's not gonna blow up in your face and hurt you badly. And that right there summarizes the point that I wanted to make with this episode. We've gone over the different types of fuel, the different valve types, We've gone over the different pressure ratings. We've talked about the elevations which each fuel could be used at, the temperature ranges, and so on. We've even talked about the different designs of stoves that can have big impacts when it comes to your performance. And with that, I will leave you with this. Just because you can does not mean you should. Be safe, don't be sorry. Again, I completely understand why some people want to mix and match the fuels. You know, propane for the winter, isobutane for the fall, butane for the summertime. All of that certainly makes sense, but unfortunately, most stoves are not designed to run on multi-fuel. I do have a question for you all. What type of fuel do you like to run with your camping and outdoor adventures? Are you able to make it all year round with one type of fuel, or do you have to mix it up as the seasons change? Comment down below. Everyone, if you found this episode helpful, please hit the thumbs up. That's a great way to support this channel. Until next time, take care, be well, strength and honor. See ya.